Um, so we're here to talk about Eternals, um, which is coming out on DVD and Blu-ray, I believe, in the next couple of days, or next week, I believe. And you are the choreographer for this. So how did you first get involved with this project? So I got a email which said, um, they're looking for a choreographer for a film, which did not say we are looking for a choreographer for Marvel, for the MCU. So I knew very little about the scale of what I was gonna be involved with. And as the weeks went past, more information trickled out. And by the time I realized I was being part of the Marvel franchise, I was literally on set the next, you know, the next week. So yeah, things uh, were very close to the wire. Um, so we, well, maybe not the next week, but it was weeks when we realized the scale of what we were, we were gonna be involved with. And it was months when we were first actually contacted, so. Well, how did the yeah. process go like for you to get the job? Like, what was the like audition process like? So I think no matter what your CV and how strong it is, uh, to be part of the Marvel franchise, you need to be a good fit for the director. You need to be a good fit for the film and what their vision is for the film. And I could sense straight away Chloe had such a a big dream for this film to uh, unify different cultures and really show different aspects of. Um, life at, that you don't always see in film and I think that's why we really hit it off I think she understood how I have perceived different parts of Bollywood and gave her a couple of options that we could kind of explore um, I know they were toying with like an action sequence for Kamel and it ended up being a Bollywood dance that so everything became a little bit more stylized um, so I think it was really really cool to to actually work with her as opposed to just be given a brief and just go and, and do something that so there was a lot of collaboration throughout. That's neat. Um, so when you're in there, so like when you say different options, do you mean different um, like dance style options? I know you said there's an action sequence, but were there different dance style options as well for Bolly within the Bollywood thing? Because you know Bollywood covers like can cover a lot. Yeah, totally. So with Bollywood, you can do Bollywood classical, you can do upbeat, high tempo Bollywood, which is almost similar to Bhangra. So we actually wanted to include a few of those elements within this dance, but it was definitely geared towards a Western audience to kind of uh, give them a snapshot of what Indian dance looks like, almost like, you know, when you have a buffet and you peck, pick a little bit of each, each dish, that's kind of where we went with the choreography. So you'll notice that Kamel does a, a little bit of jumping. He does a little bit of like smooth moves, but all of that is not just kind of defined by one, one style. We're kind of picking and choosing the elements um, of, of Bollywood that we like. So did you also need to teach the choreography to the cast and work with them on that? Or were you involved in that at all? Yes, so I taught Kamel for three months before he actually learned the dance. He had to learn like, how to move because he'd never done a dance class in his life before. I also did another scene which was kind of more movement direction and um, that was a scene that, that Gemma Chan was in so it was nothing to do with Bollywood but after I did one scene I was called back to do another one and obviously I'm not going to say no because <laughs> I had so much fun doing my, my main scene um, and it was just a, the best the best experience I will be. I keep saying eternally grateful but I, it's true I, I really am. What was the scene with Gemma like? Because I didn't know you did that scene. So what was that like? What was the difference for you working on that? And what was that process like? So that was more movement direction. So it wasn't a, a Bollywood scene. It was literally just kind of hurting people and moving them around in a circle. And uh, because if you've done movement direction to one style, you can pretty much do it to any style. So um, it wasn't really a dance scene and there's only one dance scene in the Eternals. It is the Bollywood one. But um, I was lucky enough to kind of spend another day on set and another chance to come back and see more of the action. And I absolutely lapped it up. I was like, yes, I will be there. Tell me the time. I will herd the people. I will tell them which direction to move in. Um, so that was just kind of like a background sequence. And it's one of the filler scenes. It wasn't, it wasn't too important. <laughs> But that's good that you like able to do the different kinds of things. Like you said, it makes sense that you'd be able to do one if you can do the other. Um, but in terms of the Bollywood number, back to that for a second, um, it's decidedly a bit more um, like a bit more classical retro Bollywood than rather than the modern. Like what inspired you? Who was in charge of like deciding that? And why was that the route you decided to go down? 
So I think because Kamal's character is so funny, like he is not your stereotypical Bollywood hero or villain, he is funny. Um, and I think because of that, the style that he danced, you know, that scene is actually a scene within a scene. So he basically is, is playing a Bollywood star, which is his kind of alter ego. And um, that defined the way that we were going to dance. We weren't going to be doing a serious dance with him kind of cracking jokes here and there. And like, it had to be a little bit of comedy. You'll notice a lot in his facial expressions. There's like lifted eyebrows, winks and all of those things. And I think it was defined by his character. So we had to build the dance around him. So you were working with him beforehand. What was that like um, in terms of... Um just teaching him and getting like a process to get him ready for the scene and just dancing in general. That was really interesting because I think the fact that uh, Marvel really thought about making him comfortable and making him feel like he could have the time with a dance instructor to learn how to feel like a dancer before he went in and learned the choreography. That said a lot to me because it showed me that they were super serious about bringing the best out of him. And I think if we didn't have those few months to get him up to speed, I think the whole experience wouldn't have been as enjoyable for him. Um, he talks about it all the time in his press conferences and, you know, TV appearances. And a lot of people say that's so unusual that, you know, he, he still talks about it. But I think it's, it's a testament to how much he enjoyed the process of becoming a dancer from someone that had never attended a dance class to go and perform uh, a full, it was like nearly three minutes, that routine. Um, and that's for all of time will be in a movie. So he really did dedicate his whole self to, to doing a good job. In terms of working with Marvel itself, like there's this big thing, you find it you're gonna be working with Marvel, like what are your expectations compared to the reality of it? Um, just did you have any preconceived notions going in maybe about the studio? Because like a lot of people do and then they're like, whoa, it's like this. What I well, I will say I've worked on other films, other film sets and TV sets, and it is the most secretive uh, <laughs> kind of franchise you can ever work for. Uh, even the leads don't really know what's going on hugely. So I love that. I love that because you're walking into something and it's so exciting and, you know, you're not even seeing a copy of anything until like the last moment. And I think it's partly because things change, but also partly because of the, the excitement of, of working on a film that's so um, under wraps. Um, so I'd say that as well, like for example, like, you know, you can't really use your phones on set. I was allowed to keep mine to just take a few stills of things, um, but like by and large, most people's belongings and everything were locked away so for, the, for the time that those 50 dancers were on set they weren't able to contact have contact with the outside world which you know was brilliant I was like if anyone needs to call their mom ask me because I'm the only one with a phone <laughs> so yeah how much context did you have on the scenes you were doing then because it is very secretive I know it's very much a need-to-know basis over at Marvel so how much I literally knew about the scene before and the scene after and that was it so you had the I, script? Did you just have it explained to you? No, I did not. <laughs> I wasn't that important. <laughs> I didn't get a script, but I did get some context. Um, obviously, that was enough because Chloe goes, oh, this is what's happening. And, oh, this is what's happening after. You don't need a script. You're good. <laughs> like, so you know, you know, in the kind of explanation what what's going on. Um, so, yeah, I, I understood it to, to that that level but obviously I didn't see the whole picture of the film until I sat two years later at the premiere and watched the whole thing oh yeah because you guys filmed you guys started before the pandemic right and was all your work in the pandemic yes and that made me so much more grateful for that opportunity because we had to wait so long to see it um so my gratitude multiplied a hundredfold um I also, like, in terms of the secrecy, I was also wondering, like, did you guys have, like, I've heard about this from other people. I don't know if this is happening to you guys. Did you guys have to do, like, the costume coverage thing where they're wearing, like, weird suits or anything like that? Like, were the black bag kind of things over their costume even? Or were you in more of a closed set so it was less inventory? We did it. Um, Kamel pretty much was on and off with, uh, with that. Um, but the dancers, there was 50 of them, so I don't think they could keep that under wraps. But we were on a closed set, yeah. 
I know they've done it with like quite a few actors before, like even like the background actors. So I was just saying, but yeah, the clothes set definitely makes sense. Because although a lot of the films filmed outside, were both of your scenes inside? Or was it just the one and the other? The, the purpose built, you know, it looks like it could have been filmed in India, but they built it all here. Um, and they went to like infinite detail to make sure that the, the colors, the chandeliers, all the little ornaments that you would see in that kind of environment, they were all there. And, you know, every single day I would notice a little bit of a tweak or something, or a florist would come and add a little something. Um, because, you know, there's no detail that they, they didn't think about. Were you a part of the costumes at all designing or like any, any input on that? And what was that like? Yeah, so the costumes were designed by a friend of mine called Saren, and he is a designer based in the UK who has worked on film as well. Um, he's like a bridal designer, so he understands, you know, the elaborate nature of costume, but I did recommend him and they loved his work and, uh, you know, he did such a fantastic job. So I was lucky to kind of show them the color palettes that I would suggest and they actually did go with similar colors to the ones that we originally referenced. Yeah, it really looked great. So I was like, wow. Um, but um, before we wrap up, because I do think looking at the time, we are going to have to wrap up soon. Do you have any like really funny or interesting stories from the set or from Parks and Kamal, anything like that? Anything at all that you're going to take away the most? I mean, I don't think it's funny, but I remember on the last day, Kamal brought everyone into the room, the holding room, while they were already walking out there. And he was like, where is everyone? Like, I want to say thank you to them. And this is after, you know, they yelled cut and we were done on the scene and he was like you know you guys you held me up you supported me and if you ever need anything like please let me know and I'm like there are 50 people here Kamel like are you really gonna be because you're gonna get 50 kind of self tapes or 50 auditions gonna be sent to you in a day or two if, if you if you <laughs> if you promise all these 50 dancers that you're gonna help them <clears throat> so <clears throat> I was listening to him saying that and I was like don't say that it's okay we're grateful enough we're grateful enough so yeah I kind of just jumped in and I was like thank you Kamel um yeah please don't contact him direct <laughs> yeah that's yeah a lot of the Marvel actors tend to be very um giving He's so giving, like you can see from the the way that he he has literally openly just said, you know, my name out loud at these conferences. Like he is mm. a truly, truly grateful and kind person. Um, and I think it comes from his like, you know, he, he's just such a humble person. And, and you don't get that very often when, when you are in these kind of huge films that he's in now. Um, but what a great guy. <laughs> So I do want to ask, and I usually ask all the Marvel and DC people this, would you want to work with Marvel again? And if so, what kind of project, if you know, I don't know how much you know about Marvel, like in the characters and stuff, but would you, any specific kind of project you would want to work on with Marvel? I would love to work with Marvel again, no hesitation, but I would love to work in a different era. So maybe to time travel into the future or into the past, because there are so many classic eras in Bollywood. Um, my specialism is Bollywood, but I, I do movement direction as well. So, you know, I love the team. I don't, I don't know much about the, the future of, of where the films are going. Like, as I said, it was hard enough to find out about the actual film I was working on, but I wouldn't give it a second thought. If, if Marvel called again, I'd be like, yes, when and where, I'm coming. 